Hey, what's going on YouTube? Rylan here in the garage gym, and I've been meaning to make this video for a while, but I'm gonna try to explain all the wall control attachments that I used in the gym and kind of which one does what. I know when you go to their website, you end up just ordering a whole bunch of stuff and you have no idea what's gonna work. I'm gonna try to help you today on just figure all that out. So today's all about wall control and how it applies to your garage gym or your home gym. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So today we're talking about wall control and I've got this custom wall control project or storage thing that I built within this basically a, 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 a PR5000 rep rack. And that's a whole nother video on how I did that. It was a lot more work than I was expecting. It's not, it's not really a uh, do it yourself kind of thing. It, 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 there's a lot of cutting involved. And, sh and Anyway, it was more than I thought it was gonna be. For the average person, it's probably not worth doing, but um, we'll talk about it. And what I'm gonna do is show you all the attachments I use from wall control and show you how they all work and what really works best with what, you know, for hanging and everything else. And then I also wanna talk about wall control in general. What is wall control? Wall control is basically a improved version of your traditional pegboards. Everybody knows the pegboards you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's and they're very simple. I'll show you some B-roll of uh, my other pegboard storage setup that I have. And it does work, but it has some limitations. It's not as strong. You're stuck with those simple little uh, pegs that stick out and they do okay. But wall control just basically has taken that idea turned it into a metal board, so you're getting away from some of the wooden peg boards or, or fiber boards, and they've basically taken it and just created tons of different attachments and made a much stronger system. For a home gym or for a garage, it works really well. I know it's a bit more investment and it does cost a little bit more. And in the beginning, I was hesitant, I'll be honest. I know I was trying to see the need to spend that kind of money on storage. But as you know, with a home gym, things start to get out of control real fast. And next thing you know, you have way too much stuff and you don't have where to put it. Wall control really helped solve that issue for me, getting a lot of stuff up where I can use it really quickly, but off the floor, or just you know, de declutter the gym. So. Let's talk about each piece and we'll get in close and I'll show you how each piece is used in our gym. Okay, so we're up close now. You can see everything up on the wall here and we'll just go through it one by one and show you which ones I used and what I used them on. Uh, we'll start with the long reach slotted two and seven eighths. Remember, all the names of them are kind of confusing. So we'll just start with this one and that's what this one is right here. This guy is the two and seven eighths long reach. So it's gonna look like that. And I've used it in several spots up on the wall. So it is used to store barbell collars like this. So both of these are all the same ones. Same with that. So all of these here are the two and seven eighths long reach slotted. Same with these here. So one of those will hold easily two of your spring collars. So I've used it down here on these Ozo collars here. One thing about it is they won't work for two collars, but they're a little bit too long for one. And I'll show you what these ones are in a second that work perfectly for one. The next one up is the inch and seven eighths. And that is this one right here. These one, two, three, four. And then also over here for these straps are also the same. So I'll pull one off and show you what I mean. This guy right here, that is one of the inch and seven eighths. And you can see had I known this, I didn't know this, but it fits one of these rogue colors perfectly. And then over here, I've got two sets of 
straps, some deadlifting straps, and they fit perfectly on the inch and seven eighths like this. So you can see these straps are about an inch and a half wide. So an inch and a half wide strap is gonna fit. The next one is called a standard slotted seven eighths hook. And it's gonna be a straight out hook that's seven eighths. Now, two of those up on the wall. No, nope, I have four of them up on the wall. And I, was, I kinda had to look for them. They are right there. So these guys here, this is a landmine attachment that you can add basically a chain to. And it's a, it's a whole other thing. I, I bought these, I've never really used them. So anyway, that's a whole other story. But what I use to store them is this little guy here. And that's your standard hook. And it's called the seven eighths hook. And they just call it the standard slotted. The world's most expensive wrenches ever are right here. And I use those standard seven eighths uh, hooks to store these wrenches. The slanted U-shaped slotted pegboard hook. And these are two and a half reach. So slanted U-shaped slotted pegboard hook, two and a half inch reach. And I have those up on the wall right here. And they work really well for storing accessory bars like this maybe a barbell as well. Next is the curved tip slotted pegboard hook, three and a half inch reach. These guys I do have, and I have them in a couple of spots. So I've got the three and a half inch reach curved tip slotted pegboard, hook, pegboard hooks here. And I'm using them to store one set of deadlift straps, two straps. They slide over that perfectly. And these are pretty wide straps. These, um, you know, pretty, pretty standard figure eight straps, but again, they fit on there nicely. And I've also got a set of Jim Reaper ones that are on there. A set of Rogue straps also on one U-shaped slotted pegboard hook, three inch. And that is this guy right here. I'm gonna zoom back out and get you the full picture. So this guy here, um, as far as I know, I don't use these. I'm trying to see just to make sure I haven't missed anything. But no, this is not one that I currently use. The paintbrush hook, three inch reach. It's basically similar to this. This is just a longer version of it. And this would be something that would be good for storing maybe like a, like a knee sleeve or you know, uh, elbow sleeve or something like that. It's really long, maybe a set of boxing gloves. So I don't use this currently, but to give you an idea of what they would look like, that's what those ones look like. Okay, the one inch by one inch slotted metal pegboard C bracket, I do use here. I have two of them. There's one there and one there. And they're basically holding the, the bottom of this sign. Now, since I put these on, I've actually bolted the sign to this to the actual wall control um, backing plate. So they aren't really doing a ton right now, but that's to give you an idea of what they look like. Okay, so these are the medium 90 degree band slotted hook. And I've got a couple of them right here. And these guys, you, do, you know, again, you do not have to, to buy these. I ended up with a couple of these 90 degrees because I bought one of their, uh, what do you call it? Like, forgive me, I don't have the names of this one, but this guy here, uh, let's just pull it out. This one here is actually two, uh, two, two, two prongs and that attaches to the wall. It came in my um, package that had a whole bunch of different things part of it. And what I use this for is I have a set of these uh, fat grips, so I just slide the fat grips over each one of those. I have used these like once. Um, it's a novelty item that I thought is kind of cool, but honestly, it's not something that I use. Um, not to say that they don't work or they're not good. It's just something that I don't end up using. This shelf right here. Okay, so people ask me a, a lot about how did I get the shelf? So to get the shelf for wall control, you have to buy it. Um, as, as kind of separate pieces. So you have to buy the, the tray first, 
the, the bottom portion here, and then this part here, the actual part that is like the, the tray or the keeper of the shelf, that's a separate item. I'm gonna show you in the B-roll what I'm talking about. And also, if you're wondering what size this exact one is, this guy here is the four inch version. So that works good. What I use it for is to store my knee, uh, these are elbow sleeves, and then also my knee sleeves. And if you know, these things are just a, kind of a pain in the, in the gym to store where you're gonna put them. This little shelf just worked out perfectly. In four inches, will fit a couple of them and give them a little bit of space to breathe and let them dry out a little bit. You could easily fit in more if you wanted to, but it's like I said, it's nice to have a little bit of air and let those breathe. All right, if you stayed with me this far in this video, I know you're probably pretty serious about looking at wall control. Uh, I know that was kind of boring going through all those things detailed one by one, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of how the hooks look and how they work and how do they actually, you know, which ones to buy. Um, it was really hard and I think we all end up just buying a whole bunch of hooks and attachments and we have no idea how it's gonna work. And then you end up with a box like I have right here and there's like just a whole ton of stuff in this box. I probably got $25 worth of hooks that I bought for no reason. So um, when I was building this project, I actually had one of the panels uh, show up. It was dented and it got damaged basically in shipping. I reached out to wall control. I just shot them an email and no questions asked, no hassle. They immediately shipped me out a replacement panel and the customer service was really good. I always like to share when I have a good customer service experience. If you're buying it, there's a few ways you can get um, a discount. So the one way you can do it is if you can um, sign up on their website, you can use your email and subscribe. That'll usually get you a 10% off coupon. You can also search and just search in wall control coupons. Um, maybe look on Reddit, uh, look on, you know, just Google search or whatever. And you might find one of their affiliates that has a code that has a 10% off code. And that's generally about what you're going to get is about 10% off. Do you have any other questions about wall control? Um, oh, one thing I didn't talk about was, the panels themselves, they come either vertically or they come horizontally and they're spaced in spacing of 16 inches. And there's a method to that and a reason. So most houses in North America anyway, are framed on a 16 inch on center stud. And wall control basically has designed all the mounting holes at 16 inches on center. So these are 16 by 48 and I have three panels there. Now if you're mounting it up on your wall, which is designed to do, that's gonna line up, just basically find a stud and then drill into one stud and it should line up with the rest of your studs on the wall and that's gonna give you the best strength. It's really important that you don't mount it just into drywall. That's not gonna be a good idea, especially with heavy gym equipment. If you're gonna to try to put a bar, a bunch of accessories on there, you're gonna really want to tie into studs. So if you're looking at it and wondering what's with the goofy spacing and, uh, and sizes, that's why it's designed that way. You can get custom prints done. I almost did. Um, I, I regret maybe not doing that, but it was a considerable cost. I want to say two, three hundred dollars, and uh, they'll do that for you as well. So that's it. That concludes the video on wall control. Again, if you got any questions, put it down in the comments. And thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you on the next one.